Hi, it's Lisa here from Capstone Editing. Today I'd like to talk to you about an issue that I'm very passionate about and a project that I'm currently working on in connection with it. The topic is motherhood and academia, that is, working mums who are employed as academics by universities. Right now I'm editing a book along with Associate Professor Joanne Devlin with the working title Academic Mamas. Our book is about stories, the stories of female academics from all areas of academia across Australia. The book is for anyone who wants to learn from first-hand accounts about the difficulties, challenges and triumphs of mothers in academia, about the unique experiences of unique women and the strategies that help them manage and thrive in their careers while also handling the additional responsibility of parenthood. Okay, so let me tell you why I'm so passionate about this issue. Women are significantly underrepresented in the senior levels of academia at Australian universities and around the world. In Australian universities, academic positions are graded, comprising of levels A through E. Across Australia, the positions of associate lecturer and lecturer are fairly evenly split between men and women, with slightly more women in these lower positions. At senior lecturer or level C, there are slightly less women than men. 45% of level C positions are filled by women. At level D, associate professor, a true gulf appears with over 70% of these positions filled by men. Finally, level E, professor, women fill less than 20% of these positions. And the statistic on this slide, uh, they're the most recent, but they show that the percentage for levels D and E together, uh, which makes the situation look slightly better than it actually is. If you go even higher up into university management positions like vice chancellor, you'll find hardly any women at all. This is not just a women's issue. Having an equal representation of women and men in academia contributes to structural diversity, which is beneficial because such diversity enhances collaboration, generation of ideas, knowledge and skills. Essentially, more people with more backgrounds mean more skills, insight and ideas. So what's preventing gender equity? The phenomena of women leaving academia or being passed over for promotion is commonly referred to as the leaky academic pipeline. The primary leak in the pipeline is motherhood. In Australia, a woman having her first baby is, on average, 30 years of age. Many female academics are above this average owing to a common trend of delaying pregnancy until the completion of their PhD and the subsequent gaining of their first position in academia. This is a hectic time during which early career academics attempt to secure tenure and advance their careers and now add the responsibility of motherhood to this and it's understandable why so many women choose to prioritise their child or children over their careers. That the path for advancement in academia favours research and management over teaching further compounds this issue. Research, optimally involving field and archival research, possibly overseas, is all too often rendered impossible by children, even in a two-parent household. That was my experience. Management remains relatively open for academic mothers, but again, depends on research output, which is increasingly difficult to achieve. Teaching is a flexible and comfortable option for many academics with children, but a preference among university departments for filling teaching positions with casual staff in teaching only roles means that while these positions are commonly filled by women, they rarely lead to promotion past level B. Hence we see why women are not only slightly overrepresented in the lower academic levels, but why women are underrepresented at the higher academic levels. Parity of men and women in level A positions occurred in 1997 and has remained virtually unchanged. Parity in level B positions occurred only in 2009. Level C is almost at parity, while parity at level D and level E is predicted to occur by around 2033. Some universities, like the University of New South Wales, have included a goal of equal numbers of female and male academics in their 2025 goals. This is certainly ambitious. I think there needs to be a great deal of institutional change before such a goal is likely to be achieved. My own experience as an academic with two very young kids is that there are many people within universities, including in management, that are supportive of female academics and understand the difficulties of balancing the demanding role of academia with motherhood. 
but support and, evil, and even institutional commitment to change hasn't yet been translated into concrete policies that can really make a difference to women at work. For example, most universities don't allow research funding to be used to cover the additional costs of childcare while you're away or the costs associated with bringing your kids with you. And travel is often an important part of research, whether it's required to actually conduct your research or to share it, such as at conferences. That's actually why Capstone Editing, as a business supportive of female academics, offers a scholarship that can be used to cover these and similar costs. You can find out more about that on our website. There has been research conducted into some aspects of the issue of motherhood and academia, but it hasn't yet been examined adequately or comprehensively. And the experiences of the women behind the statistics I've been talking about are completely lacking, in Australia at least. There are a few books that have been published on the subject of women in American universities. Our book aims to fill this gap. While the book will undoubtedly be a resource for those engaged in gender university and equality initiatives in academia, university departments, committees and policymakers, the primary aim is to inform nascent academic mothers through the experience of others. Personal narratives share a diversity of experiences, good, bad and ugly, and shed light on the challenges and opportunities for mothers in academia. In doing so, we explore the reasons for the leaks in the leaky academic pipeline and hopefully will aid others who are facing similar circumstances, no small part of which is the provision of a sense of and a connection to a community of academic mothers. Thanks for watching this video.